Welcome back. In today's video, I'll be showing you how to forecast data in Microsoft Excel. For this tutorial, we're going to be using Excel's built-in forecasting tool, so it'll make things nice and easy for us. So for this example, we've got the date along this side here and the sales on the right. And we've got up to the 28th of March here. And we want to forecast the figures for the 29th of March onwards. And so firstly, we're going to select our data, including the headings. We don't necessarily need to do this because Excel should do it automatically, but I always find it easier to select it and we won't run into any problems. We then want to go to the data tab at the top and click on forecast sheet. We'll then get this preview graph and you can see it's plotted the data that we've currently got in blue and then in orange it's got the forecast. It's currently got the forecast end date of the 1st of the 4th which is the 1st of April so that is adding in 4 forecasts. We can change this by clicking on the calendar icon and then we can change it to something else so we could go with the 8th of April so that we've got all of our boxes filled and you can see how it works. The further you go into the future the less accurate it will be at forecasting and it's probably only recommended to forecast by a smaller amount for the highest amount of accuracy. So I'll put it back to the 1st of April and we've also got some options here if we click on that arrow. So it's got the forecast start date and we're going to use the last date here which is set for us automatically. And then we've got the confidence interval which is set at 95%. You can see the thinner lines here which represent that and that means 95% of the future points will be within this range. You can change that using these arrows, so if we're to go up to 99% it's going to increase the size. And you can also untick the box if you don't want a confidence interval. Seasonality is set to detect automatically, that should be fine. And it's set the timeline range for us by default. All of the other settings should be fine, you can go ahead and click create and it will open up a new sheet with the graph and the forecasts in. You can change and edit the graph as you wish, but these are probably the figures you're looking for here. We've got the forecasts for the dates that we set, and we've got the confidence bounds as well. And so that's how to forecast. If you wanted to do it manually, you can do. It's the forecast.ets formula, which is exponential smoothing. So you can double click on that. It will open the bracket. Now the target date is going to be the date here to the left of the cell that we're in. So it will be E22. We then want to hit comma. And then the values are going to be all of the sales values right up until the last date that we've got. Hit comma and then the timeline will be this here. Which will be the corresponding dates for all of the sales figures we've got. Now we're going to have to add some dollar signs into this formula before we can hit enter. Because we want to tell Excel that it's just this set of data that we are looking at. And we don't want it to move down when we move the formula down. So we're going to have to add eight dollar signs in total. The first one is going to be after this comma, which is the first comma in the formula. It's going to be before the first letter and then after the first letter. So we've got the two there. And we need to add dollar signs for the F21 cell. So it would be a dollar before the F in this case and then before the 21. And then we've got dollar signs to add into the timeline data bit. So we've got E6, so it's going to be dollar sign before the E and before the 6 after the call on a dollar sign and then before the 21. Now we don't necessarily need to worry about any of the rest of this. We can hit close bracket and hit enter and it will forecast it for that date. And if we drag it down, you'll see that it's adding it in automatically for the rest of the dates here. And what the dollar signs did, it meant that it kept this set of data here, which is the actual values. If we hadn't put the dollar signs in, it would start using some of the forecasts. You can also see that these values match up with the forecast that was done on this page. And so that's how to forecast. It's nice and easy thanks to Excel. Hope you found the video helpful. If you did, remember to leave a like and feel free to subscribe. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in another video.